What is the best app for editing photos on your phone? Let's talk about that. We're Ailey and Daniel for Design Break, and today we're going to go over our favorite mobile phone photo editing apps. So I've always been really quite into photo editing. I've never been a professional level photographer, but I do like to um, edit up my pictures. So I've actually got seven um, photo editing apps on my phone right now. Oh, wow, that's a lot. I'm probably much more of a casual uh, photo editor, especially with my phone pictures. So I've just really got a couple of apps and I actually just mostly use the Google built-in uh, Google Photos photo editor. If I'm taking photos uh, out and about on the camera, which is pretty rare to be honest, then I'll edit them in Photoshop, so on the computer. Yeah, I used to use my big camera quite a lot and then use Photoshop, but more and more as phone apps get a lot better, just me using my phone. Mm, yeah. So it's yeah. kind of been a bit of a switch. I've got seven apps on my phone, but obviously I don't use all of them. Um, I should probably delete the ones that I don't use so much. Um, so the ones that I use mostly are Lightroom and um, Snapseed. And then I use the Google built-in one um, quite a lot as well, just to get the variety of tools that I need for each specific photo. Uh, I also have Visco, which I only use if I'm posting it on Visco um, because it's got the preset filters. I don't use that just for general editing. Um, lens distortions, I used to use that more, but I find I don't really like over edited pictures and that's kind of just like lens flares and things like that which can look quite artificial mm, bit cliche yeah so i don't really use that one anymore um but it is good if you want those effects if you use them subtly uh, it's quite good um photoshop camera that's one that you started using recently as well just to try out yeah i think along the same lines as lens distortions it's sort of i don't want to say gimmicky but it's it's like um, it's more like filters and stuff. Yeah, yeah. special effects. Um, so there are some like sky replacement ones, um, which in my limited testing of that feature actually works really well. Even I took a shot through a window uh, at the sky and it was able to automatically determine where the window frame was, which portion of the outside was sky, where the trees were. So it's obviously using a lot of AI. So it's, yeah, it's pretty good. Um, and then the other one I use is Polar. Um, and it's another more stylistic sort of one with filters and things like that, um, which I don't really use so much anymore. So the main two that I use are Snapseed and Lightroom, but mainly I use Lightroom. So we looked at the different features from a bunch of different apps and Ailey's favorite has always been Lightroom. And of the ones I tested, Snapseed for me was my favorite. So we thought we'd just kind of compare the two of them because they seem to be probably the best two apps uh, for mobile editing. Um, so we'll just run through them just now. Yeah. Okay. So the first thing with Lightroom is obviously it's an Adobe app and um, you can get a free version um, if you don't have a subscription, but it doesn't have all of the features, but it still has quite a good range of the basic features. So it's still quite good if you don't have a paid subscription. Yeah. Whereas Snapseed is actually free for everyone. It's actually now owned by Google. Um, but yeah, so it's completely free, probably always will be. Don't maybe safe to say that. So talking about Lightroom and Adobe, one of the things that I really like about, about Lightroom is the syncing between your phone and your desktop. So if I take a picture on my phone when I'm out and about, edit it really quickly, but then I want to do some more in-depth editing on Photoshop, um, it's it syncs automatically. So I can just open up uh, Lightroom on my computer and just get the picture with the edits done change it over to Photoshop, do some the more in-depth edits that I want to do, and then it's there just ready to share or do whatever I want to do with it. Yeah, that's a really handy feature because otherwise with something like Snapseed, you end up exporting the picture. And there are some export options, but and I always end up just saving it and then waiting for Google Photos to back it up and it's a, it doesn't always sync and it's a bit yeah, of a hassle. Yeah, and when you're exporting, you never know like what the quality is going to be like and can get a bit time consuming. Definitely. One thing that Snapseed definitely has over Lightroom is the geometry tools. So um, Lightroom ha does have a lot of tools uh, for editing the geometry of a picture, but it's they can be quite rigid and set and they don't work quite as well as the Snapseed ones. So one of the Snapseed ones that I always use um, is the free transform. So you can drag the picture using each corner to like line it up um, how you want the perspective to look. And Lightroom is a bit more rigid, so you can do it on each axis, but you can't quite do it as freely as you can in Snapseed, which is sometimes I'll, if I want to edit a picture, I'll first do the geometry in Snapseed and then take it into Lightroom so I can do more. Right. Another great thing about Snapseed is how easy to use the interface is. 
So they use a swipe system where you swipe up and down to cycle through the different effects and then left and right to adjust the amount of uh, the effect, like how intense the effect is. So it's a really simple system to use. There are a lot of effects and the interface kind of just bunches them all together, uh, which isn't the easiest thing to navigate through. Like they have things like retro lux and vintage and unless you kind of know what they are, there's no sample, you just kind of have to try them all out. Um, but in the tune image and the sort of general contrast, saturation, those kinds of things, the user interface is really easy to use. Yeah, I guess with Lightroom, so I quite like the interface of Lightroom, but that's coming from like an Adobe background. So I've, I'm used to the Adobe ecosystem. If you're if you're not used to using Adobe apps and then you go into Lightroom, it's probably not that user friendly. It's probably a lot harder to use than the likes of Snapseed. Yeah. OK, so let's go over the tools for Snapseed and Lightroom. So the hue, saturation, lightness tools in Lightroom are really powerful. Um, I think that's where a lot of other apps fall short. So in Snapseed, you can't actually adjust the hue, saturation, lightness per color like you can in Lightroom. So you can't select, for example, all the reds in a picture and boost the saturation or reduce the lightness of those. And that's actually a really powerful tool. And most um, filters, if you're using Instagram or some other app, they're in the behind the scenes, they're making these kinds of adjustments. And that's how you pull the the best out of an image by selecting the skin tones and making those, uh, you know, more saturated, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And then also in the shadows and lightness, you can change the hue of them as well in Lightroom. I'm sure you can do that in Snapseed as well, though, but... Yes, yeah. So you can for the highlights and the shadows, but you can't for specific colors. So the selective adjustments and masks in Lightroom are really handy tools. And actually the, the healing brush and the clone brush, so you can actually mask off certain areas of a picture if there's like rubbish in the foreground that you don't want to be there you can just use the healing brush and it's a really powerful tool that um most mobile apps don't have that kind of thing you have to use photoshop for more in-depth things normally but lightroom's pretty good at that yeah snapseed has a few selective adjustment tools as well but definitely not quite as comprehensive as they are in uh, lightroom there is one advantage on snapseed though which is that all the effects uh, whether that's when you're tuning the image or if you're applying like a vintage effect, it actually applies them as layers that you can then go back through and you can adjust uh, one layer. So if you've added the vintage effect and then you've added a sort of glamour glow uh, to the image, if you're going really intense with the effects, you can um, you can go back and tune the earlier effects. Or if you've got a raw image and you've changed the exposure, you can go back and, and make changes or delete versions in the layers. So mm -hmm. it's really handy. Yeah, Lightroom doesn't use a layered um, workflow. It's kind of just you can go into each setting and then readjust it as you're going. Yeah. Which works as well, but I guess it's less visual. Mm. Yeah, I think the reason they've done it that way in Snapseed is because with each layer, you can then apply a paint a mask on. So if you want okay, the vintage yeah. effect to be applied to only one area of an image, you can do that by painting on. Mm, that is quite handy, actually. Okay, so my last... Pro for Lightroom is the batch edit and the copy and paste of um, settings. So if I've take, been out and I've taken like three or four pictures that I really like um, and I want them to have the same look, I can easily just copy those settings that I've done to the one picture and then just paste them across all the other ones so they all have the same sort of look, which speeds up. Yeah, I think Lightroom is definitely a more professional tool in that sense. Yeah, it is definitely. Um, it has actually crashed on me quite a few times in the past though. And it can sometimes be slow when exporting, uh, but they're probably just minor things that are not. Yeah. They wouldn't stop me from using it, but it is annoying when it crashes uh, when you're 10 minutes into editing a picture. <laughs> yeah. I guess when it comes to comparing Lightroom and Snapseed directly, a lot of people are probably going to choose Lightroom if they already have an Adobe subscription, uh, since they're paying for that anyway, and it feels like this kind of just comes with it. And as you mentioned, with the syncing. Yeah, the syncing is really handy. Yeah, so... Um, I guess there's that element there, but in terms of actual functionality, if we had to pick. Yeah, if I didn't have a subscription to Adobe, I might just make do with Snapseed because it has it is a really powerful tool. And um, without the pro subscription to Lightroom, it cuts out a lot of the really handy features. It's also worth mentioning that they both support RAW. So in conclusion, really, if you don't have an Adobe subscription, then probably Snapseed will do almost everything you need. But if you do have one, it's definitely worth having them both or using Lightroom. Editing. Yeah. Okay, happy editing. And if you like the video, please hit like and, and subscribe to our channel if you want to see more of our videos. And we'll see you in the next one.